So I'm back here with Judd Van Sickle here at the UC Davis Human Performance and Sports Performance Lab, and we're here to review my testing results today and then yeah. talk a little bit about um, from what you learned on those results to the workout program you're going to set up yeah. for me. The goal is to, set, to help uh, prepare me for an upcoming sheep hunt in August. Briefly take me through you know, what we, what we uh, acquired as far as data and then what the results are. The big test we have here is the, uh, the lactate and energy utilization test, looking at your metabolic efficiency mm -hmm. and then using lactate to kind of help dial in your, your training intensity. So what we're looking at here is, is one, the lactate response to exercise, and two, uh, your what's called substrate utilization. So we're okay. looking at where your energy is coming from. Low to moderate intensity endurance athlete, you should be primarily being fueled by your own endogenous fat stores. Okay. You should not have a reliance on carbohydrate to fuel what you're doing because you only have a little bit of that on board versus weeks of okay. fat yeah. on board. Yeah. <laughs> the first bit of data we're looking at here is lactate versus speed. You had a pretty traditional lactate curve. It was, you know, it was flat at the beginning, just like it's supposed to be. It had an initial rise. But this gives us a really good read on where you're just starting to generate a little bit of extra okay. lactate and your, your muscle is not quite able to keep up with the production sure. within the muscle. Okay. So it's a very good marker for your, your kind of baseline aerobic zone. Okay. So moving on, you're looking at substrate utilization and efficiency. Yep, what exactly. The, what in the heck is that? So basically we look at are you burning fat versus carbohydrate during exercise and okay. how much how much of each with the goal being to be able to burn a high percentage and high amount of fat at a relatively high uh, effort level so typically you've only got 15 to 1800 calories worth of carbohydrate on board at any one time in people that are really carb dominant in their fueling you can think about it as the uh, the guy who doesn't let their gas gauge go below half yeah so your brain, even though you've got plenty of gas more. left, it's saying, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we're good. and it makes you low energy, makes you bonk. So, oh, so we're, looking, we're looking at total amount of calories that you're burning at the given different intensities. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at where it's coming from, uh, blue being fat, red being carbohydrate. And then the lines are just simply percentage. It's a different way to, to okay. envision it. One of the first things we look for is what's called the, the metabolic efficiency or crossover point. Okay. Where you're at 50% carbohydrate, 50% fat as your fuel source. This so is... that's that crossover point, that crossover okay. point and right there. Where is that? So for you, that happened at about 4.8 miles an hour. So that's a really, really easy jog. And then the other part of that we're able to calculate is how much fat you're burning as a total amount. Mm -hmm. So you're burning about 0.8 grams of fat per minute, okay. which actually isn't a bad amount of fat, mm -hmm. but when you normalize it to kilograms, you're at eight, a little under nine milligrams of fat per kilogram of body weight per minute. And if we okay. make you really metabolically efficient, mm -hmm. then you can burn, you know, all, I would say 50% more fat really? than you are now. Really? That means you have to carry a lot less food when you're out there. Food, as I've talked about, is yeah. our, the heaviest thing we put in our packs on the yeah. 14-day hunt. And if you have to carry half as much... It'd be amazing. Because and, and you're feeling better and you're performing better. And you're, and you're relying on the, the 30 or 40,000 calories worth of fat that's already stored within you, so much the better. So there, we, we'd like to see two things. We'd like to see this crossover point move further to the right. Yep. And then we'd like to see the blue line go higher at the lower intensities. We're, meaning you're using more fat. Yeah, as okay. a percentage. Oh, got it. How do I move? How do I adjust the graph? On the dietary side, it's really a lot about controlling insulin response. Okay. The more you're sell, you put yourself on kind of an insulin roller coaster, the more your body's going to preferentially burn carbohydrate. It's basically proportional. The lower yeah. the carb, the more this thing shifts, okay. and, the, and the better you are at using okay. fat. So now, are you talking you, like a keto type of diet or? that extreme or? It's, it's going to depend on what ends up working best for you. And when we're training the body, to become really good at burning fat, yes, maybe it's a good idea to spend a little time in an ultra low carbohydrate keto type okay. diet. But from a lifestyle and sustainability standpoint okay. and adaptation standpoint, I don't think it's necessary. So, so low carbs and then on the on general training aspects, um, how do we? How do so we the, the biggest thing is kind of staying out of the middle range where everybody wants to work out. They want to feel like they've had a hard workout. Yeah, so they end up working pretty hard all the time. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do instead so is stay more in the zones that use fat, which is much easier mm -hmm. intensity. 
okay. you know, for longer duration or even for moderate duration, okay. lower intensity okay. to really push your body to say, hey, the only fuel I've got laying it's around fat. is fat, <laughs> so Guess let's what? use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this kind of encapsulates the, the, the training intensity portion of it. So okay. we're, we're identifying all of your uh, important lactate oh, okay. benchmarks. We're yep. identifying the, the ventilatory thresholds. So the idea here is that we, instead of doing everything in the middle like we talked about, mm -hmm. we want to polarize your training. Okay. We want to do the bulk of it at or below your aerobic threshold, your first ventilatory threshold. Okay. Then we want to do a little bit of it at or above your anaerobic threshold. Okay. And very little of it in that middle range. Okay. The idea, especially at the beginning with the high intensity interval training, is that it basically has a signaling pathway that ends up stimulating the same biologic adaptations as the long, slow distance type training. Through intervals. Through intervals. Wow. Looking at this results, this is the workout program yep. lined up for, me for for cardiovascular fitness. And as I'm seeing here, what we talked about is HIT, which is yep. high intensity interval training. Exactly. And you have it broken down per what, eight week period? The true high intensity interval training, the way it's defined in the research, it's very different than what you get in mass media or you yeah. know at your local fitness center. Sure. They look at it as going hard for a long time, doing a bunch of different things and taking mm -hmm. short breaks. Yeah. What we're looking for is not the, I've had an awesome workout and I'm totally wiped out. It's the, let's stimulate the right pathways to make the body adapt to the stress that we're imposing on it. What I'm starting with here is two different things. It's the high intensity and it's the, the steady state. Yep. The steady state is pretty straightforward in which we're just trying to increase the volume over time mm -hmm. and not do it too quickly and give yourself time to adapt okay. and give yourself some, kind of some built-in breaks to, okay. to the idea of periodization where you're building and recovering. Yeah, so here you say start with an hour and a half to two hours fasted. So not eating before, go out, yep. force your body to burn fat yep. off of your low carb fat diet and then we're gonna work up to eventually four hours. Yep, exactly. Week one is we're gonna do four intervals at 30 seconds, four and a half minutes rest, for example. We're gonna work our way up to eight intervals at some point with yep. 30 seconds rest. And then I notice you, you'll bring it up and bring it back down in four week blocks. Is we're looking at trying to deplete the energy reserves of this cell, cell very rapidly. The first 30 to 40 seconds, you're not even really getting into carbohydrate metabolism. It, your body uses something different. It uses using, something different. Yeah. So that's the stores that we are exhausting ah. in this 30 seconds. I'm kind of a fan of the, the funnel method of training, which is where we start very non-specific to your event mm -hmm. and then hone in on being more and more specific. Yeah. So from this, we'll probably start lengthening the, the interval length. You know, we'll start to maybe do some longer like VO2 max level efforts just okay. to increase your aerobic capacity in general. Okay. Um, but at the same time, on the other side of things, we're gonna start lengthening how long you're doing stuff, mm -hmm. and then maybe working on a little bit on um, muscular endurance, mm -hmm. so heavy loaded Heavier type loaded, stuff, yep. that, that sort of thing. Training with the pack, yep. move into that. But all sense. of it kind of funneling down towards the specific demand of 12 hours on your feet with a pack looking for a sheep. I'm really looking forward to going through this and come back in for testing and see the different results. See how, th see how things change. This is a whole new perspective on training for me and I realized that you know my training in the past looking at the science behind it it felt great yeah and I was good in the mountains right but I just realizing how much better I can be and just talking about the carb consumption and when that ends and how I feel mm -hmm. and those days and be able to improve upon that is going to be amazing